Honey trees in the OG Pokemon Platinum were infuriating. There were exclusive Pokemon there like Heracross and Snorlax that you could only find on 10% and 1% encounter rates. Now, in complete honesty, a 1% encounter rate isn't actually that bad. Until you remember that, unlike walking in common grass, Honey Tree encounters took six hours in real time to manifest. Oh, but just save and reset until you get the encounter you want, right? After the encounter is loaded, you should be able to take care of that. Good plan, actually, except for the part where the encounter is decided on the slather six hours prior to the actual encounter. Also, Munchlax was only a 1% encounter on some trees. So yeah, honey trees as an encounter mechanic were trash, which is why the subscribers voted for this to happen. Honey trees only platinum is here, and it's about time we talked about it. Hi, my name is Wacko. I run some Pokemon challenges on the internet. Like, subscribe, and comment your favorite honey tree encounter. So there's seven of them. Wurmple, Burmy, Apom, Combi, Cherubi, Heracross, and Munchlax. Sure, two of them descended into separate evolution lines, but we ran a species clause to ensure that we had to stick with either Dustox or Beautifly, and the same for Mothim or Wormatum. I thought it would add a little more flavor to the run. Who knows what's in the mystery meat of this journey, you know? <laughs> that was a bad metaphor. The first step to this adventure was choosing a starter. As much as Munchlax and Heracross would have been fun, they felt a little too overpowered to begin with. Our first attempt opened with Cherubi. Did you know that Cherubi doesn't learn an offensive grass move until level 19? After one try that made it to Rourke and we got pummeled, we put the Cherubi idea to bed and tried another. Apom. Apom came equipped with Sand Attack, the capability to learn the Return and Rock Smash machines, and learned Tickle at level 15. We lost our first go with Rourke, but at max friendship, rocking an Orenberry, we took on Rourke one last time. Sand attacking both Rock Throw Pokemon was at the top of our priority list. After navigating Geodude and then Onyx, we asked Apom to two-shot the final Kranidos. One badge in the books, the rest of our adventure awaited. Boom, we're back in Jubilife, saving Elm's life. Lucky him. Power in Floroma now, and there's things to do, like beating the Valley Windworks Grunt and saving the Honey Man from Devastation. I love Winnie the Pooh. With all this honey, we were set to conquer the world. Tree dwellers, let's chat. In Floroma Meadow, we so excitedly encountered the far superior Burmy evolution line, as the male here turns immediately into Mothim. Nothing better than the classic frail bug flying trope. And in Valley Wind Works, I ran out of Pokeballs. It's okay, at the back of the building, Mars was posing to get swept by Apom. Return on this little monkey was doing numbers. Our next encounter was Combi on the route that leads to Eterna Forest. We evolved it into Vespaquen immediately and began guiding Cheryl through the woods. After we cleared the forest, we met up with Barry in the city. Cynthia also has some stuff to say, but nothing was gonna stop us from going for our second gym badge ASAP. All of the trainers sucked, and Gardenia's best Pokemon's most deadly move is Poison Sting. Let's move on. Our next encounter was a honey tree that lied in the outskirts of Eterna Forest, though shared a location with it. In Ren Plat, this tree always contains a Beedrill. In this game, this tree contains... Jupiter was next on our to throw down with list, and down we threw her. Our new friend Heracross was already chipping in. Boom, Tegepi Egg. Bang, new bicycle, pow. Cyrus is being dramatic in a tunnel and we're leaving. Passing the Berry Master's house on Route 208 means we now have access to all standard berries, including status berries and citrus. Also, we got a second chance at a Cherubi encounter here. This time, I brought Pokeballs, and this Cherim would, in exchange, bring the sauce. Our mom was chilling in the contest hall with Fantino, which we had to disrupt because we had a world to take over, and the third gym leader was currently standing in our way. Before taking a rod, however, I did have to stop under the bike bridge for a honey tree encounter that I had missed. I also think it's about time we talk about Munchlax. I worked this honey tree for a little over an hour, slathering and fast forwarding over and over trying to get my hands on our Wurmple encounter. The reason I was after Wurmple? Munchlax was only available in like four routes based on our trainer ID. Floroma Meadow, Valley Wind Works, and Eterna Forest were three of them. That left the final option, Southern Route 212, just next to Pastoria. Munchlax would remain unavailable until then. Eventually, Wurmple showed up and we evolved it into the worst of its two evolution lines. 
Beautifully. Next stop, Fantina. This is where I found out some absolutely heart-wrenching news. I planned to eat the opening Will-O-Wisp from Duskull with Heracross, provoking our guts ability and increasing our damage output to potentially sweep. That's good for me, right? That's that's good for me. Okay. Now we find out whether or not I have guts because I didn't actually check. I think I come with guts. Oh, I don't have guts. Uh, evidently it's not. It's not guts. What is it? I have a swarm Heracross? That's an option? That's terrible. Heracross was still able to take out Haunter, but the final Miss Magius became a team effort. Leech Seed from Cherum into Apom Pivots with a little sand attack cheese, and the battle was won. Miss Magitrash, three badges. Very outside of Heart Home stressed me out, but I devised a little Apom return strategy that rocked the opening bird with two hits and got off good damage against Panida. Vespi finished off the horse as well as the penguin, and Heracross aerial aced the final Roselia to propel us to the conclusion of Rival 3. Over the river and through Solaceon, there were some ace trainers that had butts to kick, so we obliged. The question was whether or not we could have Snorlax right now before Maylene, and I needed to know. The journey continued through Veilstone, then the little paradise place, a beach, Pastoria, and finally the Munchlax tree. The 1% encounter was gonna take a while, but after exactly 100 encounters, we found the Munchlax. With Munchlax aboard, we evolved it into Snorlax and took it to Maylene. The plan here was a little more fun than usual. Opening with Ambipom, we opted to Agility twice, Chopalberry in hand, and we Baton passed into Heracross. Having Rock Tombed us twice, our speed was only doubled here, which was still plenty. We ate a Drain Punch on the walk-in, as well as a Confusion Crit, before we started rolling. Aerial Ace crushed Metatite and Machoke, and Brick Break ruined the final Lucario. That's four badges. There was a double battle fight with Dawn that was easy, some business with Looker, and now a Pastoria Berry fight. For as goofy a rival as this guy is, I can't argue that he's a slouch when it comes to his team comp. He might be one of the harder rival fights. Probably noteworthy, there's a Shard Hunter to the left of Pastoria that can teach all of the elemental punches to whoever we want. With Thunder Punch on Snorlax, I meandered into the battle against Barry. Yawn, Belly Drum, Thunder Punch, Sweep. I was untouchable. I talk Barry up and that's what he gives me, huh? Anyways, we knocked on Wake's door next. I used Cherum to Leech Seed Growth Boost twice and then Sweep with three turn Petal Dance. We did risk an Ice Fang crit, but it was worth it. Oh no, Pastoria is in trouble. Chase the Kroganuck man, who isn't also very good at running. Psyduck and more Cynthia side quests. In Celestic Town, we met a grunt who had some pretty aggressive threats. We put him in his place. The next battle was against the game's scariest boss, Cyrus. Cyrus always rolls with hard hitters and run ruiners. I gave him the special sauce with our Heracross Snorlax 1-2 punch to conquer Sneasel, then Golbat, and Murkrow. We now had Surf, which meant we could visit Canalave, home to the next gym badge on our list. Of course, as with the last badge, Barry just didn't want us to have it. If we wanted Byron, we had to get through the blonde-haired menace first. Let's tango. I body slammed Staraptor twice before it finished itself off with takedown recoil. The Heracross that walked in took both damage from Beautifly and Ambipom to overcome, but we paved our way to the third Pokemon, Rapidash. Likely to save our very defensively frail Heracross, the monster managed to critical hit Night Slash on the horse to execute it in one hit. Close combat and then Aerial Ace would drain both Empoleon and Roserade. Surprisingly, Byron's gym trainers are some of the hardest in Pokemon Platinum, but we had some very powerful friends by our side that cleared through in a hurry. Byron was here, and he was gone. Close combat Heracross was just too good, especially after a single Swords Dance. I wonder what typings would have issues with this gym anyways. He always feels like a pushover. Elm called a meeting in the library with his subordinates and told them that they were responsible for trying to save the world, and if they didn't do it, he would ban them. Naturally, I had to take on Saturn at Lake Valor first. Snorlax beat Golbat, Heracross, Aerial Ace, Toxicroak, and Bug Buzz from the worst Pokemon on our team finished Bronzor. Beautifly so aggressively sucks. Holy smokes, I can't wait until I get to watch this thing perish. This Bronzor that I sent it in against literally has Rock Tomb. I was begging for it to wake up. Back at Lake Verity, we found out that Dawn was incapable of doing her job correctly. Mars had bullied her quite a bit before we could show up to save the day. Good news! Snorlax was too good for Golbat, and Vespaquen was too strong for Bronzor and Perugly. Using Vespaquen 
personally felt so cool because I'd never had the opportunity to use this thing before. After Perugly fell, we moved north through some pretty spooky route trainers that we made look easy and entered Snow Point City. It was time for She Who Shall Not Be Named. Snow Cloak Frostless was always scary, so we did have to compile some sort of a plan. It took a minute, but I made something up. Screw the plan! Screw the plan! You know what's a better plan than this? Get a fire punch! Good night! Sayonara! See you later! I probably should just top brick break to be honest. Almost. Yes! Got the roll, boys. Uh, this thing wants to use Focus Blast. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna fire punch it. Do I kill this thing? Probably, right? I killed this thing, right? It's fire punch. I have a lot of... I have a... Yes. Okay. Yep. So this is the bad... This is the bad Pokemon. We're gonna move for Yawn here. This is what it is. All right. It has Snow Cloak anyways. It's not like I had much of a... But Yawn never misses, so there's that. And I do have Aerial Ace on, um, on Heracross. Okay, please hit. Yes! What a great hit! That's one! Don't burn. Don't burn. Do not burn. <laughs> yes! Yes! Okay! Free! Literally free! This is the freest fight ever! That was super weird. Drewster, what do you think about multiple VODs, man? That went so violently smoothly, I was ecstatic. Barry had failed his mission at Lake Acuity, which no one was surprised about. Jupiter walked away like a cool cat, and I journeyed back to the galactic hideout. This is where the run collapsed. There was a bunch of grunt stuff that didn't matter, but let's talk about Cyrus. My plan with Cyrus was just to take advantage of the elemental punches and to move. Ambipom was great for this, hitting hard, fast, and with great variety. Fire Punch took out Sneasel, and Ice Punch did good damage to Crobat before we switched out. Snorlax finished it, and then everything happened. All right, question. Do you guys think that we're eating a Drill Peck right now? This has Insomnia. I misplayed so terribly. I might be in trouble. Yep. I didn't know what to do. I needed RNG, power, and defense to get out of this. I didn't know if I had it. Sure, I had packed Copa Berries a little bit of all over, but things were looking very, very difficult. After pivoting from Ambipom to Motham on a faint attack, Motham was able to get off considerable damage with Silverwind. Roughly calculating using the stats of the Pokemon I had, I guessed Ice Punch would do similar damage from Ambipom. What I didn't consider was that the Silverwind damage was dealt while in Swarm and Motham's damage output was wildly increased. Ice Punch simply didn't have the juice. And then Honchkrow healed. Cherum ate a Cobra Deferred Drill Peck, and I was in the same spot I was before the pivot. I was never eating Drill Peck on Heracross, who I so desperately needed. I was never eating Drill Peck anywhere for that matter. I couldn't risk the pivot in. I kissed Vespaquen goodbye as well and cleaned up with Heracross. Personally, I would argue I misplayed a couple of times in that fight, but it's okay, I just didn't have any room for any more mistakes from here on out. Our three Pokemon team clobbered Saturn with Snorlax opening and Heracross finishing. Galactic Hideout was behind us, though a whole horde of obstacles lied ahead. There were no more Pokemon to encounter, just these three Pokemon and technically the terrible no good Beautifly that I had left behind in the box. Welcome back to the team, I guess. I brought in two HM friends in Giardos and Staravia and taught them everything needed to get us to the top of Mount Coronet and through the Distortion World. We went on a rampage through galactic runs on the way up until we finally reached the summit. Very lucky we are to have Barry with us on this joyous occasion. Let's get into one of the hardest roadblocks in the history of vanilla game Nuzlocking, the Spear Pillar Double Battle. All right. Labadash comes out great. That's exactly what I wanted. Great! Good job going for that one, Barry. I went for the other one, so this works out. Please, Bronzor. Target. I'm trying to think of what could come in that would really upset me here. Nothing, really. Yeah, great target. All right, I go rest. Crobats. Either Crobat would be fine. Either Golbat, I mean. Okay. That was probably the worst one that could come out. I guess Slash is what I'm scared of most, but I go rest here. Okay, cool. Beautiful. 
Max Attack Lax is in the building. What do you have, Empoleon left? I think it's just Empoleon right now. Oh, it's the Raptor? Wait, you have your whole team, don't you? Okay, attack drop, okay. Based, good, good hit. Yeah, that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks that you did that, but you know. You know what they say. Good night, Perugly. Okay, punching the Bronzite, that's totally fine. Nah, uh, this thing has mean looks. No, this thing has Confuse Ray. Oh, wish it didn't go for it, perfect. Cool. I like it when there's only one lane left. This is good. No! I think I still kill, though. No, not rest. That would have been bad. Uh, Bronze War Falls here for sure. All right. Um, Golbat? It's gun tank. Interesting. I don't like the sound it makes. I think it's bad. It's a bad sound. I think it's just, uh, it's just Empoleon left, right? The whole time. The whole experience is just bad with gun tank. Should be air cutter. Oh. A very, very valuable lesson was learned in this fight. Snorlax is grossly overpowered and should serve us well in conquering the rest of this challenge. The distortion world is puzzles, and puzzles are hard. I spent a lot of time planning for Cyrus, but the bottom line was that his team was built to decimate rosters like mine, bogging grass-heavy teams with frail Pokemon. Sure, I had Snorlax, but that was the one Pokemon to Cyrus's six. I made a blueprint for how to win this one, but I needed to get incredibly fortunate. I needed to dodge a gajillion crits and boost our Snorlax to plus six defense with Defense Curl. Opening with Heracross because swapping it in was almost never an option due to how frail it was, I fought to stove off a reset. I'm definitely fast in this. Of course, I think I just close combat for insurance. I was slower. Am I mad slow? What is my speed? I'm glad it worked out. It's Brobat. We go here. Getting punished with that? I have no idea. Not a single clue. I use Yawn off the jump. That does really good damage, to be honest. I'm a little sweaty. Crit here would be a little sad, but I just need to get to plus six. We're fine. Don't crit. You? I can't get poisoned. I'm immunity, so life is good. Okay. Plus three here. Okay, or not. Fine, we don't take a lot of damage. I go yawn here. Okay, return. Terrible RNG. No crit. Thank you so much. I have to eat this crossbows no matter what. Just don't crit. Don't crit. Don't crit. Don't crit. Thank you. Oh, it's still asleep. I'm gonna put it back to sleep this turn. Actually, I don't care. No! This is the worst thing that could happen! good damage i would say i'm plus six defense right now which is hype please just hit through please just hit through the scariest pokemon here are honchkrow with night slash and weavile with night slash yep here we go boys here's here we go didn't get it we'll be okay i think we survive a, a standard crit right now don't burn me don't burn me no thank you easy game boys easy game none of them do None of them do. Oh no, my attack was dropped. I didn't consider this actually. Can I get a flinched right now? I feel like I can get flinched. I'm at plus six. Thank you. Whew. We're fine. That did nothing. Okay. All right, it's just Weavy left. Let's get Impact's BP, uh, 150. Woo! Woo! I didn't mean to rest.
GG's boys. GG's. We master balled Jiratina and moved on. One of the toughest run killers in the game was behind us. Rewatching this footage, it's interesting to me how much you could tell I absolutely did not believe this run had a chance. You can see in the glaze of my eyes, it was straight sugar. And maybe this run was a classic dead man walking scenario, but I had to keep on going. On our way to Sunny Shore, I remember panicking a little bit about the optionals and mandatory trainers. I had four Pokemon that had to be responsible for eliminating everything, and only Snorlax was particularly chunky in some regard. I really like playing defensive. It's my style. I can't lose my Pokemon if they don't faint. Snorlax was the only Pokemon I was really comfortable using. Anyways, Sunny Shore was home to Volkner, the electric type gym leader with a fun conglomerate of electric attackers. I'll save you the rewatch, but the plan was similar to Cyrus. Yawn the special attack, spam defense curl, and rest. Sweep the fight. Snorlax's special defense was chunky. I mean, look at this Raichu Focus Blast. Can't believe it hit it. How much y'all think is, this is doing right now? How much y'all think? All right, that was pretty respect. Ow. Anyways, yeah, Snorlax cleared that guy and also the ensuing Electivire and Luxray. It was a little absurd, but it's what I had to do. Surfing our way to Victory Road. Just like the route prior, I was very, very nervous about these mandatory ace trainers and regular trainers. Fortunately, I remembered most of their teams from the previous two platinum runs we did and sought to take advantage accordingly. And in what seemed like no time at all, we were at the Elite Four gates. There was one final boss fight, of course, before we could sniff the Elite Four. Barry wanted one last shot at ruining our championship dreams. Opening with Snorlax, I baited close combat into Hero cross in an effort to drop Staraptor's defense one stage and avoid the opening intimidate drop at the same time. The nerf Staraptor fell ironically to Heracross's close combat and Rapidash walked in. Snorlax yawned the Rapidash into a return finish and Heracross stepped back out into the fight on Barry's own Heracross to Aerial Ace and KO. Close combat would clear both enemy Snorlax and Empoleon en route to a final boss finish. There was only one major hurdle left in the whole run. Aaron, Bertha, Flint, Lucian, Cynthia. The Elite Four. I spent over an hour planning for these guys because four Pokemon forced me to really think about my movesets. I needed 16 moves combined that could take out each and every one of these foes. I mean, sure, I could use TMs in between fights, but should I bring Amnesia or Defense Curl on Snorlax? What about Yawn, Synthesis, or Leech Seed on Cherum? I couldn't bring everything I wanted. Whatever. I chefed up a plan. Aaron was first, and I needed Snorlax and Heracross to go to work. John is always our first turn play. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. There's also a world where we just never hit this Yan Mega, and the game just ends. We might lose, guys. I have to try and play around this, but I don't have nearly the counters I wanted to have at this point. Actually, hold on. I think I can get out of this. Okay, so this is going to be close combat. There's no way it's not close combat. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, sucks a little bit. We're okay. I don't have another play, so we are faster. Great. There's probably Stone Edge coming out next. Wasn't worth risking it. Should be Air Slash. Yep. That's fine. We're getting off a yawn. Go into Drapion, please. Hear me out. I think I'm okay with this. All right, I'm gonna go defense curl one more time, and I'm gonna try to start starting to kill this thing. Vespi is pretty bulky, so I expect it to live one. It probably doesn't live a second though. It's probably dead to two hits, right? Convincingly. Aaron, don't use the heal here and don't wake up. Great, great rolls for us. Okay, what comes out next? Probably Drapion, to be honest. Sizor, interesting. Uh, based on the fact that this thing's likely gonna take two turns, I'm actually tempted to yawn here. Oh, this will take oh, quite a few turns. I'm gonna yawn. Don't crit, don't crit, don't crit. It's a high crit move. Thank you. Is that Scissor not a high crit move?
It's a high crit move in, okay, in, yeah. in Pokemon Legends Arceus. All right, time to find out how much return does. Oh, when Iron Head, interesting. That's a crit. Again, dude? What is this? I don't have a choice. Go yawn again. And I have to go rest again, too. No, we did the if I'm sleeping, he's also sleeping, and everything's fine strat. Wow! All right! All right. Can't believe something rolled my way. All I needed to do is ask, evidently. That's high crit. Cross poison is high crit, correct? This thing's BA, by the way. All right, we're gonna get through Aaron. That's gonna be Yon Mega, I think. Let's go! Okay! That was tough. That didn't feel good. Yes! Yes! Absolutely! All right, Aaron falls. Bertha was next. This fight was particularly interesting because of her onslaught of ground types that were specifically weak special defense-wise. I was gonna have to rely heavily on one of our more frail friends here in Cherim. If Cherim didn't make it out of this one, well, it sure paid its dues. Gone. Been Aqua Tail, just as I expected. Thanks, guys. All right, cool. I like that it didn't set up Sandstorm. Let's hope it sets it up this turn. Yes! Okay, cool. Now I can set up Sunny Day. Sunny Day. Or faster. That's good. Can we get one more turn? One more turn of sleep, please. Thank you. Do I get greedy? No, I don't get greedy. The only thing is I do have to figure out how I'm countering Hippowdon. Whatever. It should be Golem next to... Or it should be Glasgow and then Golem. Solar Beam. Whisk Cash. I didn't actually do the math. I'm just kind of hoping this kills. I'm glad it worked out. I went Aukaberry. Yes, it is smart. Yes, it is. I also didn't do the math here. Thank you. That crit might have been necessary. Show me Golem. Yeah, okay. I think I might have misplayed. Yeah, that's where I think I misplayed. Um, What am I doing here? So Rhyperior is a Pokemon that has avalanche and rock wrecker i don't know which one it wants to use avalanche doesn't kill though rock wrecker does kill show me megahorn what a great miss what a beautiful miss please oko please take this out in one hit This thing has Stone Edge. I think I'm gonna go to Elsifia, pivot into Cow Cow on Earthquake, Swords Dance, Close Combat. I think Cross can kill this thing after Swords Dance. Or Yawn would be cool. That'd be cool. I went Stone Edge, that sucks. That sucks so bad. Oh, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Cash out. All right. Flint was next. The plan was entirely dependent on RNG. Snorlax wasn't thick fat. Could it withstand the test of being dead to multiple critical hits throughout this fight? One on Rapidash and one on Infernape. And I need to be able to eat both. That's actually really good. That's really good that it used this before using Sunny Day, for example. But I plan for Will-O-Wisp, I have rest. And also if I have enough defense curls set up. Oh yeah, good call, Tox. This is the moment. I might just wait until he's out of flamethrowers. Let's use two. Here's three. What does he have? 15? Oh my gosh. I can't believe I got burned. Punished. It's <laughs> hilarious. Okay. Don't crit. I guess crit didn't really matter to me, did it? I mean, we'll know when it's out of flamethrowers by the fact that he uses Sludge Bomb or Dark Pulse, but... Do I just kill it? Low key? If it goes for Sunny Day, I'm in a really good spot anyways. We're at full health. We're at full health. We're at plus six. I mean, this is everything I could have asked for. So now I hope we see Rapidash, but it's likely we see Infernape here. I don't know if we're dead to Flare Blitz from Infernape crit. We're likely dead to... Well... Regardless, we'd be in a really tough spot. 
Okay, see how much it does. Alright, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Woo! Okay. Clarion is trash. I'm actually gonna yawn here, because I think it goes will o -Wisp. Oh, it missed? Oh, it overheat. Alright. Well. That won't do anything, so. That's a crit. That's not a crit. That's just standard overheat damage. I guess I'm not I'm not special defense boosted, so I guess there's that. You're asleep. I'm asleep. We're asleep. What can I say? I'm giving it my best. I'm giving it 100%, man. Let's go. Okay. Show me Rapidash. Show me Rapidash. I want Rapidash. I want it out of the way, man. Okay. Make me save it for last, huh? Make me deal with Magmordar right now. It wants to use Solar Beam? Why? I think it just dies, right? I think I'm just too strong. Drew, so you know that squeak that, that that squeak sound that people use in uh Pokemon those Pokemon Showdown videos? Where like they'll use a really powerful move, like close combat on a ghost type or something. And they'll just do like a little squeak sound. I want that when Flare Blitz hits Snorlax. That's I think that's the dream. GG's, boys. If it one-shot Magmordar, two levels higher, four levels higher, it's one-shotting a Rapidash, four levels lower. All right. Flint in the books. Lucian admittedly was a mess. I had no idea how to deal with Bronzong, and Alakazam was faster than my whole team. With Focus Blast to hit Snorlax and Psychic to hit Heracross, I put something together and went in to give it my best. Gone. Defense girls. Let's go, boys. This should be light screen next. Hopefully, by the time this thing wakes up, the screens are back down and I can go for um, knockouts. Oh. Spadef drop here would be devastating. Should be reflect. Let reflect. Great. Next turn should be light screen. Who needs bugs when you have Snorlax? True. True. That first turn wake up's really bad. Please don't. Please don't defense drop. It was a bad turn for me. That was a bad turn for me. Um, I need to yawn and I need to reflect. Not reflect. I need to um rest. Don't defense drop. Oh, that really sucks. That really sucks a lot, boys. I actually think that Lucian heals here while I go for um while light screen comes not light screen, uh, reflect comes down. One floor so that's great. I think it shows me Alakazam next, which is a little sweaty, but. Do I just reset because of the spadef drop? Like, do I go yawn here, pivot, and then come back? I can. I might as well. I... Okay. I'm, I, evidently, I don't know what's going on. I'm setting up sun and I'm I'm solar beaming. It's actually not a terrible play, to be honest, right now. Let Cherim run its course. What am I using Cherim for in this next fight? Nothing. If it goes Bronzong, that's what I wanted. No weather ball, true. Unfortunate. No spit F drop. No spit F drop. Thank you. Fire off a of growth. I actually think I gotta wait for this thing to run out of psychics. It's a crit. Charm, just don't get crit, buddy. You're doing great. Just don't get crit. Easy. Easy not crit. Yeah, there we go. And with Sunny Day up, we now resist Thunderbolt even more because we're now plus one Spadef, right? That's what that's what this whole entire point of this is. Yup, I'm just killing the mime. Good night, mime. If we can get one more kill out of this, I imagine it goes Bronzong though. And if it goes Bronzong, this whole thing was kind of whatever. Beautiful. This is actually the mon I wanted to kill. So this is one of our scariest counters. This one and um, Alakazam. Had me sweating. That's fine. Don't confuse. Thank you. Good night, Espeon. Zong. That's what I thought. All right. What is this going to use? I think this is Gyro Ball? Quake? No, it's Gyro Ball. It's got to be Gyro Ball. Absolutely, right? Calm Mind. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I go Swords Dance and I go Close Combat. Swords Dance. I'm way faster. I have a Pay Appa Berry to eat this Psychic that comes in. It doesn't even come. It, it doesn't even come. I think in that case, I go for a Mega Horn. Go for a Mega Horn. Oh, I missed. Okay, cool. It's fine. Now I have to go close combat, which sucks, but it is what it is. Oh man, that did a lot of damage. Oh, reflect was up. 
now it's not. That's the good news. Is this psychic? I pivot here. I'm focus blast. Wow, that's a really tough roll. Yeah, I can do this. Okay, I go bug bus. Please, 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 please survive. Please survive one. Just survive one. Just survive one. Please. You suck. Literally, what's the point of having that thing? What's it good for? Nothing. Literally useless. I needed it to do one thing. I literally needed it to survive one hit. Why? Does Heracross outspeed Galliad? Yeah. Focus Blast. Focus Blast. Focus Blast. Focus Blast. Focus Blast. Thank you. What a beautiful miss. Oh, that makes my life so much better. Not really, actually. It doesn't really change anything, but it like felt like it did, you know? That's the first turn of sleep. Okay. 25% chance the run just ends here. Yes. Okay. Should just kill. Should just kill. Should just kill. Okay. Lucian done. One death. One death, Lucian. I cannot overstate how unlikely it is that we get out of this next fight alive. Thank everything that dumb butterfly died. Moxie might be one of my favorite content creators, but his namesake was absolutely brutal here. This also left us with only three Pokemon for Cynthia. My strategic concoction was heavily reliant on Heracross hitting multiple rock slides and mega horns. Never mind dodging crit dragon rush and flinch from Garchomp. The odds were against us, but we had to try our best. That's what I wanted. Dark Pulse is ideal. And of course, it's breakfast for us. Beautiful. Uh, what I do need to do now, for sure, is yawn and then rest. What I'd like to do is take under 30 damage when I pivot out. And I'd like to pivot out in first turn of sleep. Yep, we now survive Garchomp's Dragon Rush if we need to. I assume it's Flamethrower. Dragon Rush is its stab move, and we're much more physically frail than we are especially frail. Okay, cool. We killed everything at this point. There's not a single thing we don't kill at times two. We're so strong. Who comes out next? Togekiss? Okay. We're gonna rock slide here. Come on. Yep. Thank you. All right. Togekiss falls. Show me Garchomp, please. Milo. Okay. I think I have the Megahorn. The thing is, Garchomp's faster than me. If I go for close combat, I'm in hell. But I don't think Rock Slide kills, right? If I'm Heracross going up against Milo, I guess it's only level 58. And it is pretty physically frail. I go Megahorn. Okay. All right. Milo falls. Okay, Roserade. Roserade, I think I can kill with Rock Slide, right? Come on. There's still a loose condition. All of this is going right, but there's still very much a loose condition. And this is it. Need to hit through flinch. Yes! 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 Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, last Mon, Lucario, we stay in. We just, we just close combat. Sure. No crit, no crit, no crit. Yes! Yes! Absolutely! <sighs> Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Elsefia, Cow Cow, Edgy, and Moxie for the roles y'all played in this run. If you liked the content, please subscribe and also like and maybe even comment. Okay, bye.